lovely introduction, Matt. As he mentioned, I am originally a Texas native. I am a first generation, actually Mexican American. I live in a tiny, tiny, beautiful little town on the Mexican border. It is called Far, P-H-A-R-R, -R, and it is a lovely all-American city. It was actually voted an all-American city. But we did the Slate Conference in the Wisconsin Dells area, and then I'm going to fly out of the Twin Cities. So I am currently at Minneapolis. Um, I am going to drop a link in the chat, and this link is going to give you access to our presentation. This presentation is going to have some really good links in it. And those links are specific so that you guys can get into our activities. It'll take you into our library, different little things like that. And it's also what I'll be using today as we go through our presentation. As Matt did mention, if you, for whatever reason, have any questions throughout any of the presentations, you can go ahead and put them into the chat and I will be more than happy to answer those. Um, so as Matt said, I am a CAMI teacher success champ. All that means, it's a very, very fancy way to say, I do their uh, professional development, which is honestly an absolutely amazing opportunity that I was given with CAMI. But prior to jumping on with them, I was actually a ninth through 12 social studies teacher for 15 years. Um, so we'll just get started with Cami. So we are, first of all, a web platform. And if you've never been or heard of Cami, all you would have to do is open up yourself a new little tab and just type camiapp.com and it'll take you straight into our homepage. Here's where you can learn a lot of good things. One of the things that I love, absolutely love to point out in our website is under resources. Please always be on the lookout for our CAMI blog. And the reason that I always point this out first is because there are so many articles, but my favorite are the ones that we do on a monthly basis that will tell you everything that is new in CAMI. So that's one of the amazing things about CAMI. It is a constantly evolving and getting better tool, I guess, if you want to put it in like a certain way. And so if you uh, are part of our blog or you just want to join into the newsletter, it'll tell you everything that is new in CAMI on a month to month basis. That being said, on this page, um, you will have it in your presentation. You do have access to my email. Please know that you can email me at any time and that I will respond to your emails and it doesn't necessarily have to go through a chain. You would not have to go to your administrator, principal, then to Matt and then Matt to me. You guys can just email me directly. But more than anything, the reason I wanted you guys to have this presentation is because of the following slide. So 15 years of teaching taught me many things, but the one thing that I left my classroom always in, with my mind, in my mind, was the best way to learn is just to dive in and try it out for yourself. And the best way that we're gonna do that today is just by jumping into Cami and working on what I like to call activity number one. So I know some of you might not have two screens, so you might be going between tabs, between the Zoom and the presentation, and that is absolutely fine. But if you would just go ahead and click activity one, it's gonna take you straight into Cami. Now, if you have never used Cami before, it's going to prompt you to log in. Now, if you don't wanna log in at the very, very bottom, in like teeny tiny letters in gray, it's a skip for now. You can go ahead and skip for now, or you guys can go through the process of just signing up for Cami. And please know that if this is your first time and you are under a teacher account, you will get Cami premium free for 60 days. And then at the end of the presentation, you're going to have another link that'll give you that trial for another 90 days. I think 60 or 90, I can't remember. But you guys are gonna get it for free to try out with your staff, with your students, with your um, 
with your parents is one of the things that I was telling Matt earlier today that I taught this to a group of parents at a PTO not that long ago. So if you will just do me that great, great honor of just jumping into this activity. And as you are jumping in, one of the things that you're going to notice, since this is a group activity, we do have what I love to call our collaborative corner. So it tells me who has entered into our group. So I have myself and of course, the amazing Matt Jacobson. So if Tim and I can't remember who else was on, if you guys wanna jump into the activity, all you have to do is on the Zoom chat, there is a link. If that link is not there for you guys, please, please let me know and I will put that back in there. And then just go ahead and go to slide number two and it will be activity one. So the first thing I do wanna point out is if you are on Cami and you are using this activity, what you are going to notice is that you might not have all the tools that I have here, but that is for a very good and deliberate reason. If you are an elementary teacher or you're teaching Cami to somebody that has never used it before, if you have all of these tools open, it's going to be super overwhelming. And if you're teaching it to a younger crowd, they're gonna just start clicking away at everything and they are gonna not pay attention to you at all. So that is the first really, really honestly out of this world feature that I wanna show you. It is called our control features. So from our collaborative corner, you would just jet straight up next to the printer. You're gonna have a little sideways V and when you click on it, it's going to give you your sharing options. So I put it as anyone with the link can annotate. And then down here, I also have the collaborator. So as you guys are coming in, your name will start showing up. But what you are going to see is that you're only going to have the text box. And that was done on purpose. So I have turned off all the tools and I wanted, I wanted everyone to just focus on that. However, at any point during our activity, I can turn these back on depending on what we're doing. So for our very, very first activity, it just says use the toolbox, the text box tool, I'm sorry, to write your name in the box that fits you. So I am currently feeling really, really good because I am here with an amazing group of teachers, educators, administrators that just want to help out and they want to learn more on their technology. So I'm feeling really, really good. However, we might not all be feeling that way and that is perfectly okay. So to our collaborative corner, we have added Tim Harris. Welcome Tim to our little collaborative corner here. So if you on the left-hand side, we'll look at your tools. You will grab your text box and you can type in your name under which area are you feeling today? Are you feeling good, okay, or bad? Completely up to you where you wanna put that. And as I mentioned before, this can all be found in our sharing option, which is on the top right-hand corner you would click on it and you can see what features I want to turn on and off. Now, the other thing that I do want to point out as well is if you look at the second option, it says anyone with the link will get their own copy. So right now, all of us are working as a group. However, if I wanted you guys to work on this individually, I would just select the second option. And I also do have those control features. But for now, we're going to stay with our collaborative group. Awesome. So Matt, Tim, thank you so much for answering. Now I'm going to point out something else. So Cami has a lot of tools that are kind of behind the scenes that you don't really get to see. For example, like our control features. It's not out there for everybody to see. The second feature that you cannot see at all is I am the owner, I am the teacher, or I'm one of my collaborators. If, for example, here, Matt, I'm trying to move his name, I want to delete it, get it out of the way. Same thing for Tim. I want to move what he said. If you notice, I cannot do that. So if you were doing this, for example, on a Google Doc or a Jamboard, 
all your students, all your teachers, all your staff have access to everything around. With Cami, you only have access to move things that you wrote. So Matt kind of put his name over mine and quickly moved it out of the way. And I, if I want to move mine, I can do that as well. But you only have the ability to move your things. Now on that Cami blog that I was talking about, that is one of the new things that is going to roll out. We're hoping, crossing fingers, that everything goes perfectly well and we can roll that out in December where whoever created the document, say the teacher, then they are able to move and delete those annotations. I love how Tim is playing. You keep on playing with it, Tim. That's what Cami is for. So now we're gonna scroll down just a smidgy and we're gonna go to activity number two. And this is which artist is known for his pop art. So now what I'm gonna do is I am gonna select another tool for you guys to use to try out. And I'm going to use the drawing tool. So I'm gonna turn off the text box. I'm gonna turn on the drawing tool and then I'm gonna click okay. So what happened on your end, you will no longer see the text box. You are only now going to see the drawing tool. You are going to grab your drawing tool and just FYI, two things that have just appeared as of yesterday is our ruler and our protractor. Those are brand new as of yesterday to Cami. So if you are a math teacher or a geometry teacher, they are amazing tools that you now have access to and they are brand new as of yesterday. I, however, am not gonna use either of them. I'm just going to choose my color. I'll go with a pink today. I'm feeling a little girly. And then I can even decide if I want this to be a solid line or a broken line. And then how thick do I want my line to be? Now, if you have little ones and your little ones are on a touch screen, this is going to be an amazing tool for them because it helps them practice their dexterity. So I here have a... Um, a touch screen. So if I think that, you know, Leonardo da Vinci is known for this, I'm going to put a little check mark. If you're wondering why my check mark is backwards, I am a lefty. And so I never learned to do my check marks that way. It feels completely weird for me to do it that way. But yeah, you guys can go ahead and do that. You know what? I am also just realizing right now, I am also going to open up the eraser tool because you might make a mistake just like I did, and you might want to erase your answer. So everybody's putting on Leonardo da Vinci. It is actually my very wonky friend, Andy Warhol. So Andy Warhol, any of you guys have seen the Campbell Soup picture? That was him. So, you know, it's okay. We can always try again with our third activity. So what I'm doing here with you guys is not only showing you the tools, but in the background, I'm showing you guys the Cami templates, which are completely free. And I'll show you guys where to get those in a minute. But you're also looking at the way your students would see this or your staff would see this if you're the principal and you're sharing this out and your teachers would be your students. So you're getting both sides of what Cami can do. What can it do for me as a teacher and how do you as my students see it? So now I'm gonna scroll down to the last activity. So now I'm gonna ask you to use your add media tool. So I'm gonna go back into my sharing options. I'm gonna turn off the eraser and the drawing tool. I'm gonna scroll, there is my add media. And what I love about this is you can actually select the tools within a tool. So the tool itself is add media. But however, if you don't want to have the camera on because you don't want the, kid, uh, the kids taking selfies, you can leave that on. I'm going to give you guys just Google search and then I'm going to hit OK. And then on your end, it's going to open up. So which do you prefer, dogs or cats? Use your ad media tool to include a picture of your preference. So you guys would only have the G for that Google image search. I am a dog lover, so I will put dog. And we're gonna have a slew of pictures. 
just FYI, I know most schools have a firewall, safe search filters. CAMI has their own safe search filters within our program, so you don't have to worry about what is going to pop up when you search on our Google image search. So I'm going to get a little bit more specific because I have a German Shepherd. And there he is. Oh, this looks just like Lucky. Lucky is my dog's name. Oh, you guys are so amazing. Go Matt, go Tim. You guys are doing an amazing job with all of your activities. Good job. So this is just fun, really creative ways in which you, oh, look at those. Oh my God, you're going to make me want them all. And they are expensive and they eat a lot. So you guys are doing a great job. Now, if you worry as a teacher, like, oh my goodness, how am I going to know who did what? Just go ahead and hover over the pictures and it'll tell you who put them on there. Oh, that one is so cute. As you can see, you have our initials on there so you know who is collaborating on this activity, which is absolutely great. It gives you, um, oops, and I can just hit and do over here. It gives the teacher the ability to just be watching but not blatantly like, I, I'm, I can see you type of deal. And so the students feel that they can um, participate and they don't have to worry about being called out because it wouldn't be like, oh, Matt, which is your picture? It's like, as the teacher, I can go ahead and hover and I can know what belongs to who. So that's a great another little thing that's kind of in the background for teachers. Now, I'm going to just leave this little area for like two seconds. Um, I mentioned to you guys that the way to get here is just camiapp.com, and I think I have it open right here. So when you open up camiapp.com, you're going to go into your um, homepage, which is right here. Just putting it out there, Cami is device agnostic. So if you have iPads, Chromebooks, desktops, HP, Samsung, Apple, Lenovo, we work with everybody. We even work on cell phones, and I'll show you a little trick on that in a minute. But what I wanted to point out in our homepage is something called our Cami library. So you could either access it from here, or you can just browse our templates. So a big congratulations to our graphics team, because we are now up to five hundred templates since we started this in March, which is absolutely mind blowing. And we are constantly adding to this, by the way. So if you're like, hey, the template that I needed wasn't there, you might want to check the following month. We might just have added it. You can search on here by filter. So if I am a elementary teacher, I am teaching my kids their ABCs. I would just type ABC or alphabet. Oops, terrible speller. I apologize for my atrocious spelling. So here we have our different alphabet templates that you can use where the students would trace the letter. And here I'll put up the letter K. So they can trace it, they can find it, they can draw it, and they can write it. So this is a great way if they are barely learning to write, instead of just running off all these copies, they can work on it straight with Cami. And if you know that they only need the drawing tool, then you only open up the drawing tool and they are not overwhelmed with everything else and they're not clicking away on everything else. But not, we don't only have templates for the little ones. We also have, for example, main idea for our wonderful ELA teachers. So we have here, what is the main idea and give me three supporting details and then a little summary at the bottom. So if you as the ELA teacher think, oh, I need something where my students can type in their main idea, we got you covered. And we have different varieties of it. If you are an art teacher, we do have coloring pages for the little ones, but for our older babies, we have comic strips. So they come in color, black and white. It just depends on what the teacher wants to do. So we have several of these that they can use. Um, and like I said, the I think the best ones that are across the board for all teachers, all subject levels, 
are our great graphic organizers. So we have your T-chart, your bubble map, Cornell notes, Soapstone, if you're not familiar with this, it's actually for literature and reading. Um, this is cause and effect. And I think it's super cute that it is done with a bowling picture, kind of like the cause is the ball, the effect is what happens after. So here it's knocking down the pin. So it's just great little ways that you can incorporate Cami into curriculum you already have. You can use it with activities that are found in your drive on your computer or in that old workbook that you've had forever. You can just scan those workbook pages and up they go into Cami. And if you're like, okay, where was that again? You go into your homepage. Oops, let me log in. Went all the way to the front. Once I log in, it is right here. I can look at templates. I can jump into the library. And I can also go into different tutorials. So if you're like, I am brand new to this, one hour is not enough. You can go ahead and go into our tutorials, watch these videos, read the little blogs, and you're going to get the help that you need. And if you're like, no, not enough for me, email me. We can set up a session. You, I, It would be one-on-one. -on -one, or if you have a group of teachers that want to learn, please know that RPD is absolutely free. It is customized and personalized to your needs, and it is unlimited. So you guys can reach out at any time. Now, the next thing I'm going to do, so I'm jumping back into our activity, is something that I normally would not do with my students. But I think since you are a little bit older, I'm going to go ahead and turn on all the tools. So this gives you all of them from our dictionary all the way down to our signature tool. And it also gives you our support tools. So support features are copy, paste, spell check, adding pages, and new, brand new as of last week, I think, voice typing. I will show you where this feature is found. If you do not want it on, you can now turn it off. So I'm going to go ahead and turn them all on for you. You are more than welcome to jump back into any activity and just go crazy using the different tools. So speaking of tools, I am going to take you through a couple. If at any point you have any questions, please feel free to just stop me. Now, the first tool that I want to show you is the dictionary. And if you're thinking, why is this lady so cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs for a dictionary? I taught ninth grade. Having my students open a new tab was like pulling teeth. They would exit out, they would hit the wrong button, they would lose their work, and it drove us half wild. And if I have a 45 minute class and I spend 10 to 15 trying to get you to open up a new tab, I've lost a good chunk of learning. So with our dictionary tool, we would just click on it. What word do I need? Good. It gives me, I can now listen to it. Good. It'll read the definition to me. To be desired or approved of. And it'll give me the multiple meanings. So it tells me what it is as an adjective, as a noun, or as an adverb. Now, brand spanking new as of yesterday. So as you can see, I have typed this out. How are you feeling today? Brand new feature with our dictionary is I typed out the word text box. I click on it. Well, it's supposed to give me the definition. So here we go. So as you can see, we still have a little bit of glitches here and there, but here we have the word right. So I have typed this out and it is giving me the word. Right. And it Marked is letters, words, or other symbols on a surface. And it is also giving me the definition. So if you run into little things like, oh, I clicked on this word and it didn't give it to me, please know that this is brand new. So we're still getting all the kinks out, but we are going to be fixing it as we go. And we just wanted to get it out there because we know that this is one of the things that our teachers wanted. Somebody's already using voice typing. I think that's what Matt is doing right here. So that's where I'm going to go next. So I'm going to skip around my tools. So in our text box, I absolutely love this when I have to write emails, 
I wish I had this at the university. Whoever invented this should get the Nobel Peace Prize. But if you just click on text box and you drop a text box into the activity, a couple of things that I want to point out. One is two of our fonts, the last two. So if you follow me all the way to the bottom, you have Open Dyslexic and Lexen. These are fonts that help out our students with dyslexia. Next to that, the sizing, the spacing, and all that. If we shimmy all the way to the opposite end, we have a little microphone. This microphone, when enabled, as I speak, it is going to start typing out everything I say, period. You must be careful because if you do not turn it off, it will record everything you say, period. So as you can see, it has even recorded the grammar. So when I said period, it stopped it and it started a new sentence for me. Hidden tool behind this. If you are a school that has beginning, beginning language learners or you have a foreign language group, we can do voice typing in different languages. So I will show you. On the top right hand corner, you have your initials, mine are BR. I'm gonna go to my second option, settings. Within my settings, there's a couple of things that I could do. Look at my email, I don't have a Microsoft account. It is a teacher license, but I'm gonna go ahead and keep on scrolling. If you scroll to about, after all the little check marks, you're going to see something that says speech to text language. I am, a, as I said, a Mexican-American, first generation, only one in my family born in the States. So Spanish is actually my first language and it's Spanish Mexico, not Spanish Spain. So I have set that as my setting. I'm going to go back into my activity. I'm gonna go ahead and click refresh so that it picks up this new language that I have chosen. So now I will click my text box again. I will turn on my microphone. Ahora, cuando yo hablo español, también lo va a escribir en español y me va a poner los acentos. So what I said is now when I speak in Spanish, it's now going to write it in Spanish and it's also going to include the accent. Now, the reason I get the spell check is because I have Grammarly on my computer. And so I'm probably missing accents or it's trying to do spell check in English or Spanish, which doesn't really work. What you also have to remember is it doesn't do the settings based on your speaking. You actually have to go back into the settings. And now, since I'm done with my Spanish for the day, I will switch it back to English. And then again, even with our English, we have several versions of it. I will do English in the US, but there are, like I said, several versions of it. Now, going back up to, I showed you guys the dictionary, the read out loud. So there's two ways to do this. If this is something that you typed, so right here, what I did right here, oops. Let me remove that text box and choose my select, oh, choose my select tool. So when I choose my select tool and I hover over anything, so I'm hovering here over Tim's comment, I can actually listen to it. I can click on the microphone. Smiley face, good, how are you doing today? I am good, what day is it Wednesday misspelled? Yep. So there it is. So you can listen to it that way. If it is something that is already typed, so for example, here, the word good is part of the template. I would just hit my read out loud. Good, okay, bad. And if you think, okay, you know what? That was a little too quick. If you look at all the way at the bottom, I can change the speed. I can, default will be one, but I can slow it down to five and then do it again. Good, okay, bad. So let me show you the way this would look a little bit on a different story. So I'll go in here and I have a reading passage from our second grade test in the state of Texas. It is called Star Parties. So I will just click on my read out loud. I will change the speed just a little bit and then I will start. 
As cars travel on the long road up the hill, their drivers shut off the headlights. Now, if you have students that are like, no, I do not want a girl reading to me for whatever reason, you can change the voice. Now, what is going to look a little bit different if you're looking at this on your device, I am currently on an Acer Chromebook. If you are on a MacBook, a Lenovo, a HP or Samsung, this voice pack right here will be different because the voice pack is tied to the device. So if they don't look the same, don't worry, it's not broken, it's just the voice pack goes with the device. So here I can change it out. I'll put English 7. I don't know which one this is. As cars travel on the long road up the hill, their drivers shut off the headlights. And so now, as you can see, the students like, okay, yes, I feel much more, I feel more comfortable. This is somebody I can relate to. You know, our students will use almost anything, you know, to try to get out of these activities. What is also really cool within our changing voice is if I have something in Spanish, which I thought I did, but it's probably, um, I might be in my drive. Please do not judge my drive. I know it's rather messy. Um, let me put me more about computers. So this is a little story that is in Spanish. It is called Mi Nueva Casa, my new house. So this is in Spanish. Let me just zoom in a little bit, just in case you can't see. And if I put it to be read, for example, in English, this is how it would sound. Yo vivo en Granada. As soon as ciudad pequeña y tiene. So this is like somebody whose English is their first language and Spanish was their second. And you're like, yeah, I don't want my students to go through that. So you would change the voice but now we're gonna change the language. So I'm going to scroll through my many languages that we have here, and I will choose Espanol Uno or Spanish One. And let's look at the difference. Yo vivo en Granada. Es una ciudad pequeña y tiene monumentos muy importantes como la Alhambra. So this is really good for those beginning language learners. If they still need help in their native language, this is a great way to give it to them, but it's also great if you have a foreign language program. So I know most foreign language programs won't start either until middle school or high school, but it's a great tool to have so the students can be learning the proper pronunciation. So not only are they reading it, but they're also going to be listening to it and they can also practice speaking it, either using our text box with the voice typing or with one of our many comments, which is the tool that I will go to next. And it is one that I absolutely adore. So within our comments, we have four. We have a text comment, a voice comment, a video comment, and the absolute most, I think, underrated tool, it's kind of like hidden in there, is our screen capture. So let me show you why I absolutely love our screen capture. So if I click on it and I'm going to screen capture this, again, as Matt said, be advised this is recording, be advised that when you click on sharing your screen, you are going to have three options. I will choose the Chrome tab and I will choose the one on the activity we are on. But, you know, it, please be advised that if you do choose entire screen, it will record your entire screen. Every single tab you open, what's on your desktop, and if you have multiple screens, please make sure you select the correct one. So I'm going to go with our tab. So I'm going to start talking to my students. Now, the reason, I don't know if it'll work with me. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't, because I've got two cameras going at the same time, Zoom and Cami. But as I'm recording, I can be telling my students what the instructions are for today. I can be explaining what tabs they have to go to if I have to switch between different tabs, or I can work out an example for them, which is honestly, I think the best way, especially if you are doing a math activity. So you could be working it out, you could be looking at your students, and then once you're done, you would just hit stop, it saves it, and the absolute best thing about this is it's going to stay on our platform. 
So you do not need to share a separate link with your students. You do not need to share um, this. You don't need to change the settings for it to go from private to public. You would finish your recording. Your students would hit play. So I'm going to start talking to my and there you guys hear my beautiful voice. We have, for those that you know need it a little bit wider, we can go full screen. And then once they're done looking over that, we can exit out and they can now you know, go back to working on their activities. Now, if you're asking yourself, well, what's the difference between a text comment and a text box? Text box is what I've done here. So it's included on the template. It is on top of the activity. With our text comment, it's going to show up as a little dot and it's going to be off to the side. So this is absolutely amazing for feedback. It is something that you can write here on the side like, oh, um, next time Google the information or something like that. You know, whatever you wanna type in to your students, to your staff, whoever you are working with. So those are off to the side, whereas the text box is on the work itself. So that is the difference between our comments and our text box. Markup tool, one of the things I do love to point out in here, besides that we do have these amazing highlighters, which you could either use box, freehand, or line, is that we do have strike through. So I'll use that with our story. I know that our ELA teachers that are absolutely wonderful creatures of this world, they would always tell me when I was in school is like, please eliminate all the extra information. So if you are going to use that as a strategy, you can tell your students, all right, let's go into our markup tool. Let's use our strike through. Let's make it in pink so we can really avoid it. And let's strike through everything that we don't think is important. And it removes it from the, well, it doesn't remove it. It strikes it through so that the students are able to get rid of that information. We could also use our underline. All right, let's underline those keywords. So I would select my keyword and I would use our underline and there it is for the students. Now, if your students are handy and dandy and they can do this with a drawing tool, hats off to them because I know I couldn't. Speaking of our drawing tool, the one that I do want to point out, because like I said, brand new, never used them because they just opened them up. We have our ruler. So I have no clue how this is going to work, as you can see. There we go. Hmm. Not really sure what's going on there with our ruler. Oh, there's our protractor. So I guess the ruler's still a little bit wonky. So um, like I said, with all these brand new tools, they are going to have kinks in the beginning, but we promise to do fix them. And like I said, in the beginning, go to our Cami blog and you're going to have all of it there. And what and on our protractor we have, oh, I guess because you can make it bigger. Interesting. I said, I'm learning right around with you guys. Spin it around, exit out. So really, really good stuff. Huh? I need to let them. Oh, there it is. So there's our ruler at the top. So I know that this is great in case your students are learning measurements, we can turn it around, flip it, whatever you need. It is there in our drawing tool. So that's great to know. I love that brand new, as you can tell, that's why I'm like, ooh. The other thing that is also absolutely new. So I think I have a blank page here. Yeah, I do. I'm gonna show you guys our questions. And then I think I'll just open it up and see if you guys have anything or we can just have a conversation. So questions is very similar to Google Form with a couple of exceptions. So first we have multiple choice and I would drop this in here. I would type in my question, um, who, what is the main idea, right? And I type in my answer choices, A through whatever. Now, the key here where we have our differences is when I go to set my answer key, I can decide whether I want just one answer to be correct or whether I want to make it multi-answer. And how many points do I want to assign? So that's one of the really, really cool things that is going on with our question. So let me get that one out of the way. The second one that we have is our drop down. So now instead of seeing it all there in your multiple choice, the students would now, oops, sorry, the students would now see a drop down menu. So we would per, put in our drop down, 
again, uh, who is the main character. And again, when I set my answer keys, I can go single or multi-answer, depending on what I want to do with it. But the one that I think is absolutely out of this world, amazing, our engineers, like awesome people, is the short answer. And there's several reasons why I love this one. First of all, the fact that it grades a short answer. Imagine for a social studies teacher, a math teacher, somebody who is not used to grading short answers, this is going to be mind blowing for us. So I would type in my question. However, the magic comes in the answer key. So when you type in your answers, if you know, you know what, my students can answer this in a variety of ways, not just one, let me include those varieties. The other part that is just like, wow, is that it's going to allow for partial matches. So if I turn that on, I click it on, it will work. It will look for keywords. So if those keywords are in the student's response, it will be graded as correct. So once you have your questions, you would assign it. This is a feature currently only for Google Classroom. So if you are using Teams Schoology or Canvas, we are headed your way next. However, currently questions is only open for Google Classroom. And that is how you would assign it. So you would create your questions, you would get them ready, you could even preview the questions, and then you would assign it as a Google Classroom assignment, which is really, really good. And then we have something called grade by page. And what I love is that we have those little articles and it takes you through the grade by page feature. It'll show you what it looks like. We have how to videos and what it means for you as a teacher, what it means for the students. So you basically have laid out all your assignments and you're grading them one at a time and you decide what grade you give your students. So this is something where it would be with the questions, the Kami questions, and this is if it was a different type of assignment that you didn't use questions in. So that is all in our little help area. Okay, so one more thing. I know I always say one more thing and I never finish, but I think this one, um, like I said, we were at Slate. It is a great conference in the Dells area in Wisconsin. When I showed this to a teacher, she's like, where were you yesterday? I was like flying in here. Um, if you go to our question mark right next to your initials, if you go next to the question mark under help, not only do you have our help center tutorials, but you have something new in there that is going to help both of us whenever a teacher or student encounters a problem. If you look at the fifth option, send help recording, what that is going to do is it's going to record your screen. So if you're having any glitches, twitches, or problems, it'll record it because a lot of the times it's really hard to explain what's going on. So if you just record it, we'll be able to get that and we'll be able to tell you, oh, okay, I see what's going on or a lot of the times it only happens on a certain device. And so instead of you trying to explain it, you can just get on that device, click on the little question mark and click on send help recording, create screen recording, and that sends it straight to our support team. So again, it's one of those behind the scene features that you're like, Wow, I never would have thought to look for that. I never would have thought that was there. But it's some of the things that I do love to point out because even though it's not something like one of our amazing tools, it is something that is extremely beneficial to the teachers and the students. So those are just some. I know I had an hour and I wasn't even getting through all of them, but there's just so much Cami has to offer. So in that presentation that I shared with you guys where I only made it to slide two, there is a little video that tells you what is Cami. We have a whole uh, YouTube channel where you guys can go in, learn more information. Slide number three shows you how, if you don't have the Kami extension, it'll show you how to get it if you want just a blank page or if you want to go into the website. 
our amazing, wonderful, absolutely, totally free Cami library has all those great templates that you see there on the side and you have the link on there so you can jump right in. Split merge, I didn't get to this one. It's one of those tools that doesn't really pop out, but it is great to, this is the best way I can explain it is you have a packet, you took the staples off and you're laying the sheets out all at once and you're picking and choosing what you wanna use. Or you have two packets and you wanna combine them or three or four, as many as you want. Um, Cami tools, more Cami tools. So this is where I wanted to get to. It is slide number nine. We have back to school videos. So it goes through Cami 101, Cami Google Classroom, Cami Schoology, Cami Canvas, uh, training tips and guides. And then you have a free coupon. So when you click on that, it's gonna tell you, congratulations, you have a trial. Please know that you can share this with everybody. Christmas is coming. And if you're like, hey, I'm gonna get you Cami for Christmas, here you go. Please feel free to use that coupon. Our training feedback, any feedback that you have for me, absolutely love. And then of course, if you guys wanna stay in touch, please do so at any time. And you can just click on that link and it'll ask you how do you wanna get in touch.